Tewkesbury is at the heart of leafy, southern, educated, middle-class Britain. And in so many ways, it is normal English towns like this that hold the key to why Britain voted to leave the EU. In June, it voted 53% to leave. Tewkesbury is normal Middle England. In almost all of England, there was a narrow majority to leave. What people don't know is that 59% of all leave voters were middle class. Of those, 34% of all leave voters were social class A and B, managers and professionals. Only 17% of all leave voters were skilled manual workers, white van man if you like. The vote to leave Europe was largely a middle class English vote. Professionals were the only social class group to vote majority remain, 57% across the UK. But they were such a large group of voters and turnout amongst them was so high that they also constituted the largest block of leave voters. The Brexit vote has been unfairly blamed on the poor. Geographers divide the UK, north and south, with a line that runs all the way from the Wash right down to the Severn. Below that line lives 52% of all Leave voters. There are a few places in the south, such as London and Oxford and Cheltenham, where house prices are high and rents are high, and you have to be doing well to be able to live there. And in those places, a majority voted Remain. But across the rest of the south of England, a narrow majority of people voted to leave in almost every place. And it's not just the middle classes who voted for Brexit. A common myth has sprung up that it was the lower classes, especially Northern English voters, that swung the pendulum in favour of Brexit. That they mattered this much is fantasy. There's a caricature of elderly voters, an affluent generation of pensioners voting out the hopes of the young. But in fact, since 2012, the life expectancy of elderly women began to fall in Britain. It got worse in 2013, and in 2015, we had one of the largest rises in mortality that we've had since the Second World War. Our health is getting worse. If we wanted a health service funded at the levels they have in Germany, we would actually have to spend an extra billion pounds every week on the NHS. The old have not been doing well in the UK in recent years. It is hardly surprising then that older voters, more dependent on health and care services, found the £350 million figure so alluring. Economically, in the 1970s, the UK was one of the most equal large countries in Europe before it entered what is now the EU. Only Sweden was more equal. That has changed completely. Tewkesbury may look like a chocolate box setting, but like any English town of this size, it is socially divided. It has its rich enclaves and its poor enclaves. The UK is the most economically unequal country in Europe. So perhaps it isn't surprising that it's the first country in the EU to choose to leave. All is not well here. The best off 10% of people in Britain take 28% of all income. Nowhere else in Europe did the best off 10% take so much. And half of that is taken by the best off 1%. Middle England is not a happy place. It is not a healthy place. It has been pulled apart by over three decades of growing inequality. When push became shove, a narrow majority across all of average England voted for the only apparent anti-establishment offer on the table. <laughs>